Hey guys, that's me Randall Tyson. I'm back again today with another reaction video. This time I'll be reacting to Stone Cold talking about his legendary bear thrower, Mark Yeeson. I'm sure a lot of you, when you were watching WWF back in the day, always wondered how on earth Austin could not only catch bear so well, but who had such a good throwing arm. And who would have guessed it? It's just the former timekeeper for WWE. So it'd definitely be interesting to hear all this came about and to hear what Austin has to say about it. So without waste any more time, let's get started. I want to evolve this conversation into you throwing me beers. I don't um, know how many times I've had people ask, "Hey man, who was that guy throwing you all those beers?" And I always say, "Hey, it was a time, it was a timekeeper and former referee Mark Yeaton." And on Twitter, he's at WWE Timekeeper. Mark, here's a question for you because I I don't know the answer. Maybe you can give okay. this to me. But when did we start that? Whose idea was it to start drinking beer? Because I don't remember someone saying, "Hey, we're gonna get Mark to throw you beer." It just happened organically, and we started. We kept doing it. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know where it came from, but uh, they tried it one night, it worked, and it just stayed. <laughs> it goodness. stayed for a long time. I just always made sure I had enough beer, because I didn't have beer a couple times, got knocked out for it, so uh, I had to make sure I had enough beer for you. <laughs> hey, Mark, with, the, with all the working punches that I hit you with and a couple of stunners, did I, did I ever stiff you or were you okay? I mean, I'm sure I caught you a time or two. <laughs> no, um, you took care of me every time. You were always very good with me. I guess you knew I was small. <laughs> I mean, you know, one time after the Montreal situation with uh, Brett, uh, you were mad. I think you were wrestling Mick Foley. And you came to ringside. With, you came over and you grabbed the microphone and you grabbed me by my tie and you dragged me in the ring. You cut a promo on me. <laughs> and awesome. a couple of lines I remember is one with put a little bass in your voice, trying to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another one was, um, well, you can always get another job. As in, you know, you can't get another life if you screw me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Classic but you were awesome. you were always you were always good with me. Um, I never got hurt. I mean, when Paul Bear had me come into the ring and told the bell for Undertaker. I got to about three before Kane grabbed me, chokeslammed me, and tombstone me into the ring. Oof. And he was perfect. I mean, it was it was great. And uh, I mean, Seamus picks me up by the face, knees me in the gut, throws me across the announce table into the into the wall. I felt it, of course, but I mean, you guys always took care of me, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I still feel stuff from refereeing, but when, on the overall, it was only a couple of times when I get, um, like I said, bruised ribs from getting stomped on. Um, a split head from a bell because I, <laughs> I pulled it one too many times. But I was really lucky over the years that I didn't get hurt too much. Hey, uh, going back to the, the beer throwing, yeah. you threw me so many beers, and you had just a hell of a damn touch on that arm, because most of them were like an underhand lob. And, you know, we had signals. I was watching a couple of uh, highlights of us catching beers on YouTube, and I'd give awesome. you this kind of the sky hook thing like I was going to catch it over my head. Uh, and you, you would toss the beer accordingly and pretty much hit the target almost all the time. And it's amazing how many of those beers I caught. And people, I think I did have a pretty good knack for catching beer, but also I had a pretty good quarterback. And so there was there was a few occasions when you weren't the guy throwing me the beer. Sometimes it was Chimel, someone sometimes it was whoever was there because you weren't at every single show. You were at most of them. And so I was, I was like, where's Eaton? Where's Mark? Because you know, a couple of years ago, uh, Terrell Owens was talking about Romo. That's my quarterback. That's my quarterback, but Mark Eaton was my quarterback. So if you weren't there, it was it was just a little off for me because you were my favorite quarterback to throw those beers. And there was a couple of them, and you'll remember these where I'd give you the signal, and I'd probably had to been at least 30 yards away, and I'd give you the signal, and you'd kind of give me that, that like a catcher. Behind a plate, you kind of give me the no, and I'd like, give me the yes. And you're going to throw that beer, and so you kind of like, okay, here goes. And you'd launch about a 30-yarder, and – because you was worried about the, the beer cascading, hitting someone in the head. Do you remember those throws? Yeah, I remember them. Making me throw them over the ring, up the ramp to the stage a couple <laughs> times. Yeah, you made me throw them quite a, fit, uh, quite a distance sometimes. I was but always afraid. I mean, you were a great catch, so that was always good. But it was always the fear of me getting one of those beers going that distance and going into the crowd and hitting somebody. I'm like, oh, but you never let that I happen. Really <laughs> I was going to say, even if you didn't catch it completely, and you, you, know, you still stop it. <laughs> oh, I was going to stop I, it from hitting the, hitting the fence. Were you in yeah. Japan the time we did the beer bash with uh, the Dudleys and Stacy Keebler? 
No. No, I only went to Japan once, um, and I, I don't know if you were there. I can't, you know, I, that was a back in days. I don't remember that show too much. Well, I think we went through 115 beers that night, and that was the most I'd ever went through. Man, I'll tell you what, and a lot of people said, hey, man, was that real beer? And I say, yes, it was always r real beer, except for the one time, and there's pictures of it on the Internet. We're in, uh, I think it was Molson. Uh, where was the, where's the Molson Arena at? Yeah, okay. So I think it was a Sunday or something like that, whatever it was, but that was, or maybe it was against the, the rules in the building, but it was NA beer, non alcohol. And mm -hmm. so all of a sudden those pictures start making rounds and thinking, oh, they're throwing this guy non alcohol beer. And it's like, no, 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 man. That was a one time thing, and I don't know why it happened, but all that time I was getting those beers that was real beer, and people would get mad at me. They'd say, oh, man, you're, you're, you're wasting half the beer by putting it on you. <laughs> and I would tell people, it's like, hey, man, the beer that went in my mouth was for me, but the beer that went yeah. on me was the show business, and that was for the people. Exactly. But I can't tell you how many times I left that ring and I had a little bit of a buzz. <laughs> because of all those beers I drink. You know, when you shotgun about, you know, anywhere from six to 12 beers and maybe you get half of them in on an empty stomach after you've wrestled, it goes to your head pretty quick. Definitely. And there was a couple times when I got to do a little bit of business with Goldberg and we'd do something after a match. And I'd go out there and I kept tossing Bill beers. And this is back when Bill didn't really drink beer. Hey, he had really? to drink them to keep up his gimmick because Stone Cold's throwing, to, throwing them to him. So, you know, I'd always keep shoveling him beers to get him buzz. You know, it was, it basically, it was a rib. I was going to say, that's a rib. I, I don't know how you walk back sometimes it's with some, the number of beers you drank that I threw. I go, I would go through two, three cases. And you, I don't care if you're drinking a third of the can. That's still a lot of beers you were taking. I mean, you'd pour some on some guys and so, on and so forth, but you always get a lot of beer in you. I have. I don't oh, think I'd be able yeah. to walk out of the ring after that. <laughs> Never mind up the, up the ramp and backstage. You know, towards the end, Mark, I always tell people I, I got paid to drink beer and I wrestled on the side. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I want to evolve. That's such a great line. <laughs> you got paid to drink beer and wrestle on those slides. I'm going to have to remember that one. That, that, the whole thing was really interesting. Like the fake beer thing, even though it's only once, I didn't know. So that alone was worth watching and reacting to this for. But Mark Eason seems like a really cool guy. As Austin said, it's like looking for um, your culture back and your, <laughs> your specialty. You know, the one guy you can always rely on to toss with reliable accuracy. And it's just a magic pairing somehow between Stone Cold and Mark Eason. I don't know if Eason ever played professional or yet even amateur um, sports of any kind, let alone NFL or American football, whatever you want to call it. But whatever or however, it was unbelievable. And as Eason said, swing of air to Austin as well, because as good as Eason's aim was, Austin was still a hell of a good catcher. He he almost never missed a can, and that just took an amazing amount of skill, especially considering he admitted that he would be half buzzed at least by the time he left the ring, and yet he could still catch a long distance frame beer can being half drunk. So Austin's not only a great wrestler, he's apparently should have been <laughs> should have been a catcher, but I'm glad he was a wrestler anyway. So yeah, I just thought this would be an entertaining, fun one for you. It certainly was for me. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notifications bell so you never miss an upload. I upload new videos every single day. So yeah, have a good day, guys, and I'm signing off.